Uh, hello, good morning to some of you, good afternoon to most of you. This is Pavel Chmelas from Grey Cortex. I'm here with my colleague uh, Michal Shrubar, the, Shrubar, the uh, Chief of CyberOps, and we're going to present you a webinar. Um, it will take about 30 minutes, maybe a little less. Uh, and if you have any questions, please use uh, the application or window Q&A for that. Uh, and we'll definitely deal with your questions towards the end of our uh, presentation. So let's start a bit slow because people are still joining us. So what you see here um, is the coverage of the uh, satellite internet, uh, internet satellite uh, provider K KASAT. It's an American company called by Biasat. And on February the 24th, early in the morning, primarily in i mean this service in several parts of eastern europe went down definitely it was because of the connection uh, to um, russia attacking uh, ukraine and also because this satellite internet is used by military arm um, ukraine military and also president zelensky uh, and what we know that uh, this was because um, a malicious update was was pushed uh, to the satellite modems of the of the of the end users. Uh, the biggest target uh, outside Ukraine was a wind turbine farm, uh, a wind park, uh, on the coast of of uh, Germany in the North Sea. And out of seven thousand turbines, uh, almost six thousand uh, were uh, were uh, attacked and stopped. Basically, stopped working. Went into autopilot. Um, and just for this was altogether something like eleven gigawatts. And uh, as we are in Czech Republic, the biggest nuclear plant is Temelin with two point two uh, gigawatts. So it was like five nuclear plants that went out. So quite uh, quite something. Um, I mean, what happened um, on the February 24th, it was just an execution of an attack. But what is sure that this attack had preparatory phases that uh, happened long before, most probably long before uh, end of February. And we are uh, going to talk about all these, all these phases, ideally to prevent a successful execu execution of, of, of the uh, attack. Um, so what we see that several national authorities issued warnings uh, about increased uh, cyber risks and also several uh, declared uh, up uh, straightforward that or increased the cybersecurity alert levels. For example, in Poland, it went to number three out of four um, the Charlie uh, level. And so let's start with the promised three steps. The first is identification of critical systems uh, or assets. And basically, just very briefly, what can it be? Uh, so it can be tools to manage uh, your, 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 your network, like domain controllers or, or central um, administration tools. Definitely where you store your data, like websites, uh, data storages, uh, and so on. Uh, critical uh, assets, including backups and, uh, and users that access them. Um, and then also network administration accesses like remote desktop, SSH, Telnet, uh, and so on. And also we should mention industrial control uh, network or, or the assets in them. How can you find them? Uh, basically, what we are going to present now is that, I mean, or historically using Mendel, you can filter and, and search these assets. And uh, today, Primer will show uh, how the uh, automated tagging works. Misho, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, Pavel. Uh... As you said, uh, identifying critical systems uh, on your network can be a challenging job. Uh, sometimes uh, the administrators have uh, inventory in spreadsheets, sometimes they have it in text files and so on. Uh, that's basically uh, what we can see uh, these days. 
uh, the approach that we are using is uh, that we are monitoring or listening to network traffic. So we are monitoring uh, how your devices uh, communicate on the network. And using this communication, we are trying to find, uh, based on the behavior, uh, what critical systems do you have in your network? What we are looking at right now is our system, Great Cortex Mendel, and uh, we are looking at the list of VLANs or list of subnets uh, that this system is monitoring. As you can see, uh, all those VLANs are from the Great Cortex network. And uh, we will look at the list of devices that are communicating from uh, those subnets. Uh, which we can see uh, right here. As you can see, uh, there is a lot of uh, lots of IP addresses, lots of devices, uh, and a lot of information uh, about them. Now the question is how to uh, basically identify critical systems that we were talking about. Uh, our system is able to automatically detect systems uh, uh, that could be critical for your infrastructure based on their behavior. So for example, uh, typical critical systems could be uh, domain controllers, which, are, which contain uh, users in Active Directory and other, other, uh, other critical information. So that could be one of those systems that uh, it's definitely good to know uh, how many uh, of uh, them do you have in your infrastructure, how to identify them and so on. How can we do it uh, in our system? Uh, on the left, you can notice that there is a lot of uh, filters options, and one of them, which will be particularly useful, is host tag. Because using this host tag, we can uh, basically tell the system to show us, uh, for example, Active Directory servers. So what I need to do is uh, simply type AD, and uh, you can see that uh, it will show uh, a few options and the one that we are interested in uh, is this one this uh, role server ad that means uh, or this option is telling the system show us all the systems uh, that are servers and they are running active directory and providing this service to the network as you can see on this monitor network uh, we have three of those uh, systems uh, we have alpha we have bravo and uh, also alpha uh, using the IPv6 uh, IP address. So if I just click on the first one, uh, we can see that this is one of the domain controllers. And uh, you can see that there is not just the AD tag, but there are also some others, like for example, DNS, LDAP, NTP, uh, radius, web, and so on. So this is basically a server that is providing this uh, services uh, to the network and other clients can connect to it. Those services were identified based on the behavior. So it was not uh, tagged by us, but the system tagged it automatically. If I, for example, click on the AD, uh, you can see that it was auto detected. Uh, you also have an option to add your own tags. So for example, if you have a group of servers or a group of uh, clients in one particular department that you know that they have uh, some special access to some special device, you can give them your own name and you can tag them this way. Based on this tag, you can then uh, uh, filter them, find them, uh, use rules on them and so on. Uh, if we get back to the tag filter, and we will look what other options are here. Uh, you can see that there is many of them. Uh, we are tagging clients that are uh, using some specific services, but we are also tagging ser servers that are, for example, uh, using some industrial control protocols. Uh, we are using remote uh, accesses. Uh, we are tagging clients that are uh, connecting to databases and uh, uh, much more others. So for example, uh, if you would be interested in the database servers, I would just simply find this stack, role server and DB. Uh, let's filter that. And it will show us all the systems that are uh, running some kind of database and providing uh, this database uh, to the network. So we can see there is uh, about six systems. 
we can see that some of them are using uh, PostgreSQL, some of them are using some other kind of database and so on. As you can also see, uh, we can also display the operating system that, are, that is running on the specific device and also when the device uh, appeared in the network, which can be also very useful for uh, network auditing, for uh, looking for new devices and so on. So this is basically a very simple system uh, that we are using to automatically find uh, interesting uh, devices on the network. So it can be used to find uh, domain controllers, it can be used to find uh, databases, it can be used to find uh, file shares, and possibly uh, some other kind of special devices that you should uh, that you should pay more attention in the network and which could uh, contain critical data and uh, you should focus on them. So this is, uh, this is all for identifying assets on the network. This is how you can do it uh, using our system Gray Cortex Mendel, which identifies those systems based on their network behavior. So you always have uh, up-to-date data. Thank you, Michal. <clears throat> so let's look at the second step. And uh, so when we, after we identify the critical assets, the next logical step is to create security uh, policies. Uh, so traditionally, these policies uh, can be based on, on um, let's say, static information like IP uh, or, or details or URL or replication or combination of IP and services, even like file path uh, when you create a signature for that. And as well, using communication directions, uh, for example, what can be accessed from the internet and what not. Uh, and the, the, the main advantage of uh, the automated uh, tagging is that you can create rules that can basically uh, detect dynamic change, changes. Uh, Misho, can you, can you show that please? Sure. Let's get back to our system and we will have a look at the events uh, that we're generating for some specific uh, device. As you can see on the left uh, in the filter host, uh, we had filtered a system that contains the uh, keyword file share. Uh, if we look at the events, uh, those were, let's say, notifications that the system found uh, that were happening on some particular day, which was 28th of March. And those events were detected uh, during the communication of this device. So uh, let's have a look at them and let's have a look uh, at what the system found uh, about the changes uh, about this system. One of the events that we have here uh, is the new file share server access. What does it mean? If we click on this uh, event and see the details, we can see that there is uh, our file share server uh, which is uh, on this IP address. Uh, it's in the server's uh, Gray Cortex subnet. Uh, so it's some kind of a server that is providing some services uh, into the network. As we can see on the left, uh, the system had detected that there were uh, some new devices that, was try that were trying to access uh, this server. That means uh, that uh, this access to this server was something uh, that is new for the network. So it uh, haven't been uh, seen before. So every time somebody new will access your shares that is containing some critical data, the system can detect that and can give you uh, the information about that. So as you can see, uh, there, was, uh, there were three devices that were trying to access the file share using the port 445. So it, it's probably some SMB file share that is providing some, uh, some data uh, for other clients on the network. And this is basically how you can watch uh, the new devices that are trying to access this share. There are also some other uh, detection options. For example, uh, in this case, uh, we had detected that there was a new SMB admin share. What does it mean? Uh, this means that somebody was trying to access the 
usually hidden admin share, which usually uh, provides uh, the directory uh, containing the Windows files. Uh, this is something that is not very uh, usual for just uh, normal sharing and only the administrator of the system uh, should have uh, remote access to those directories. This is also typically used uh, during uh, attacks because if the adversary is able to get access uh, to the device, then he usually have the admin credentials and he's able to uh, get access to the system. And this is, uh, this is the signature that can, that can detect this kind of behavior. So if you, if you see something like that, uh, you should definitely investigate it. And uh, you know that uh, something strange is happening on the, on the network. Uh, another kind of detection uh, is based on the policy because uh, you can define your own policies. You can define um, you can define who can access uh, your file server and who uh, is not a who shouldn't be accessing your file server. And based on this network data, uh, you can basically watch who is accessing it. And uh, once there is access that shouldn't be allowed, you can be notified about that. So as you can see in this communication, uh, there were some devices uh, that were trying to access our file share, but uh, we defined uh, that uh, this is not allowed. So anytime uh, somebody would access this file share, you would be notified about that. And uh, this is not just for the SMB shares. Uh, you can basically write uh, signatures for any other servers, for any other kind of services, and so on. As you can see, uh, this signature, uh, which is uh, the rule is, is in here, is very simple. It just defines uh, and triggers or any accesses to this uh, specific IP address and also uh, the port number uh, for, the, for the file share service. So as you can see, uh, writing those rules is very simple. You can do it yourself. You can write uh, them. Uh, you can write as many as you want. And uh, anytime uh, this access would, would happen, you would be notified about that. So this is, this is all for the policies right now. Uh, I will give word back to my colleague, Pavel. Um, another another uh, tool uh, to find uh, some some uh, emerging uh, attacks is by detection of volumetric anomalies. Uh, when what we mean by that, uh, basically, is detection of outliers based on uh, quantitative parameters such as data transmitted in and out or packets flows. Uh, number or combination and or combination of ports used, uh, number of communication partners, uh, or even uh, some some quality parameters like uh, response times. Misho, if you can show that. Let's get back to Ray Cortex Mendel. And we will again uh, have a look at our file share because our file share uh, is providing uh, critical uh, files uh, to other employees on the network. So for example, you can find their uh, information about invoices, uh, you can find it there, uh, information about people and so on. And what we would like to definitely know is if there are some strange behavior on this file share. So for example, if an employee is trying to download uh, all the files and for example, use them, uh, save them for themselves or handle it to some other company. Uh, another situation that we would definitely want to know about is uh, if uh, or when the infrastructure gets infected or if there is, there is some hacker that will try to try to uh, infect you and get some money from you, he would probably today use a ransomware and he would be typically looking for uh, file shares that are uh, storing a large amount of data and he would try to basically encrypt them. Uh, if that would be happening over the network, uh, something that definitely has to happen is uh, that they will read all the data uh, uh, over the network they will have to encrypt it and then probably write it back. Uh, during those attacks or during uh, that kind of uh, communication, uh, there will be a lot of reading of files, uh, a lot of flows and so on. 
This is something that can be uh, detected by our system because our system is basically creating uh, models of behavior of the devices on your network. And based on those models, it's able to find and notify you about uh, anomalies that are happening on those devices, on your subnets, uh, on your services, and uh, basically in your entire network. One of the detections uh, that happened in here is uh, outlier, which is saying us that there is some strange behavior uh, in data uh, that were transferred on some specific service. If we have a look at the detail, we can see that this anomaly was detected on our file share, which is providing uh, critical files uh, to other employees in the infrastructure. And it was happening on the port uh, 445, uh, which is the port using for the, for the file sharing on, uh, in the Microsoft uh, systems. Let's have a look at the detail and let's have a look uh, at what the system is telling us uh, that actually happened. As you can see in here, uh, we detected two anomalies that happened uh, on March 25. And uh, it was data anomalies, uh, which you can see in this column because the system is telling us that uh, uh, some data uh, were going out, uh, out uh, of our server. You can see that in total, it was about 16 gigabytes of data. And this data uh, was downloaded from our server. So somebody uh, connect to it and downloaded uh, basically the entire share. If we have a look at the flows, we will be able to see who exactly downloaded the data. And uh, in the flows in the, in the metadata of the protocol, we could also see uh, what kind of files uh, were downloaded, uh, if, if the connections were successful, uh, and so on. This kind of detailed information uh, will be visible uh, in the network flows because we are storing uh, all this uh, important and interesting information when this connection is happening. As always, when presenting something, there is an issue. Sorry for that, gentlemen and ladies. Oh, we will just wait a uh, few, few seconds uh, when the data is loaded. It shouldn't be that long. Oh, here we go. So as we can see, uh, this is how the connection looked like. So there was some client, uh, which we can see it was from Great Cortex clients VLAN. And uh, there is some computer uh, with the name uh, CyberOps PC. And this computer uh, connected to our file share. And as you can see, it downloaded about 12.2 gigabyte gigabit of data. Uh, as you can see, uh, we have a lot of information from the application layer. So uh, we can have a great look about what kind of files were downloaded uh, from the share and when, uh, what, what's the name of the share. As you can see, it was fileshare.waycortex.com and the file share uh, itself is called data. Uh, if you are familiar with the SMB protocol, you can very quickly identify that there is a lot of file names. So you can, you can identify what kind of files were downloaded uh, from this share. So as you can see, uh, we are storing a lot of uh, important and uh, interesting information uh, from the traffic. So you can, once you start investigating uh, what happened in the network, you should be, you should have all the necessary information that you would need to investigate uh, what exactly happened. In this specific case, uh, we would have to find out uh, why the device downloaded that much data, because as the Mendel is saying us, this is not normal for this device and this file share. And this is definitely something strange that we should pay attention. Um, so let's also look at what happens when the attackers are already inside and trying to get uh, more access. So let's look at the later stages of the preparation phases of the uh, attack. Uh, so once if that happens uh, and, and there are devices uh, in control or controlled by, by the attacker, uh, if they are in, in passive or, or hidden uh, state, 
it's hard to detect them because they are communicating home maybe once per day or once per week. But if they are getting activated, uh, then uh, the, the jitter uh, decreases uh, and, and we can detect if they communicate like every hour, two hours, six hours or 12 hours. And um, because there are some periodic patterns uh, of, the, of the communication and, and this is not done by looking at the content. So this also works for encrypted communication. And also uh, there is a range of uh, Trojan frameworks or, or known exploits or known Trojan frameworks and known exploits. They can be uh, detected uh, by, uh, by uh, the detection rules <clears throat> as, as, as well. Um, and then what can be done, definitely you should know about it. So uh, setting up a proper alerts via email or via export to, to other tools uh, like log management seems or, or, or SOC platforms, this is a must. Uh, you can also uh, trigger or automatically trigger traffic recording for, uh, for additional investigation of, of the recorded PCAPs. And um, if needed, it's recommended to create response integrations uh, to, for example, firewall, network access control, or and so on, uh, via their API, and then based on that, uh, trigger automated uh, blocking or 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 whether uh, temporary or 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 not. So these were the three uh, simple steps you can do to uh, prevent damage uh, in an increased state of uh, cybersecurity uh, risks. Now, let me mention that uh, Grey Cortex has experience, uh, or or we are we are being used as a tool for forensic investigation after uh, attacks. Uh, like what I mean is post hack investigation to prove that the attackers uh, are still inside or not at all. So thank you for your attention, and now there is a room for your uh, for your questions. As always, there is a question regarding the recording of this webinar. Uh, it's being or it was recorded, and you're going to get uh, a link to the recording uh, in the next one or two days. So last. Uh, last chance to place your questions, um, but there are none, which is great for us. We're going to take a break with, with Michal. So thanks a lot uh, for your attention. Uh, if you have any questions at a later stage, uh, feel free. Don't hesitate to, to contact us. So have a great day and goodbye. <laughs>